Yo, what is up guys? It's Ryan. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be discussing Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. Phantom's Revenge is one of the most unique histories of any roller coasters out there. The ride was built by Aerodynamics and it was a custom looper and it operated from 1991 to 2000. During the 2000-2001 offseason, Chance Morgan was called on to the job to make some modifications to the ride. The original four loops were removed. The height remained the same as the lift hill was unchanged. The drop increased from 225 feet to 228 feet. The length was increased from 3,000 feet to 3,200 feet. The original ride time was 2 minutes and 15 seconds. The trains were modified removing the over the shoulder restraints. Word on the street was that this was one of the most insane roller coasters and intense roller coasters out there at the time. Having never experienced Steel Phantom, or heck, even being born at that point. I can't say anything about whether that's true or not. However, what I do know is that Phantom's Revenge is a kick-butt roller coaster. So without further ado, let's get into this coaster review. As it stands, Phantom's Revenge is a Chance Morgan Hyper. And if you don't know what a Hyper Coaster is, it's when the height or drop falls between 200 and 300 feet. What's almost as crazy, if not crazier, than its history is that its second drop is actually longer than the first drop. Before I start diving into the ride experience, let's read off some of the stats. Phantom's Revenge has a max height of 160 feet, a drop of 228 feet. Remember how I said that that second drop off the second hill is longer than the first one. That is how it qualifies as a hyper coaster. A top speed of 85 mile per hour, a track length of 3,200 feet, zero inversions obviously since they took them out, and a duration of a minute and 57 seconds. The first thing I want to talk about is the drop. Now, this one's going to be a little confusing because, as I said before, the biggest drop is the second one. However, I'm still considering in my book the drop to be the very first drop coming off the lift hill. And it is a very awesome drop. I think it's awesome in any seat, especially in the back seat. You definitely get pulled the most, as usual with any coaster. Your back seat's definitely going to be the best experience most of the time. Coming out of that drop, it is pedal to the metal acceleration. You just keep going faster and faster, and you will definitely hit some G's going into that straightaway, and you will probably gray out a little bit. But what's even more intense is when you go up into the next hill, up into the big drop, and that is where the ride gets awesome. For me personally, no matter what seat I sat in, I grayed out going up into that lift hill every single time. The G-force you hit there is just unbelievable. That second drop for me was kind of hit and miss. Sometimes it was intense, sometimes it wasn't. Either way, no matter what seat you're sitting in, since you're already at a pretty darn high speed, it is very fast, and it is a very thrilling drop. And then once you get out of that drop, you go into the next airtime hill. And if I'm going to be honest, it is a little bland of an airtime hill, but you do fly over it really fast. It's still a cool element in my book. Next, you'll go into an in-banked turn that is not very tall, and that's when you start to see the transition of the ride from a big old hyper to a low to the ground, lean green airtime machine. This thing is nuts. Once again, if I had a POV, I would take you through each individual element by description. But for the sake of less confusion, I'm just going to summarize the rest of the ride. It turns into a very low to the ground twister airtime machine. There's not much more I could say. Every single airtime hill I hit absolutely fucked me off the seat. Probably in the top five of all coasters I've been on for ejector airtime. I wouldn't say that at any point in the rest of the ride it was ever intense to the point of where I would be graying out, but it's intense in its own way just from absolutely launching you one way to another relentlessly. It is element after element after element. You are just snapping left and right, up and down. At one point, sitting in the front, the ejector was so strong, I literally hit my head on the front of the train where the hood of the car would be. It was insane. The pacing is unbelievable, and the more and more the ride warmed up throughout the day, the better and better it got. But I wouldn't even say my first ride was bad. I don't think one airtime hill hit more or less than another airtime hill. They were all equally about the same, which is pretty darn awesome. You don't get that too often on coasters. And because of its crazy unique restraints that look like, I guess you could say, a pool noodle coming down from one side, it doesn't even come down on both sides. Almost like a lever. 
you will get more space on one leg than the other. So even if you get quote unquote stapled, you're still going to get tons of airtime. It is the craziest restraints I have ever seen, and it is awesome because it allows you to have so much freedom and get so much airtime. In my book, those restraints are super comfortable, and they increase the thrill aspect of the ride. In between all those little ejector airtime hills, there are a few helixes. None of them I would say are really super insane, but they do help keep the pacing of the ride, and it definitely is still fun to fly through, so I don't knock them. I enjoy those elements. As to whether I prefer the front or the back seat, that's kind of up for debate. I think the back seat does pull you a little bit more, and when I say a little bit, it's a very subtle difference. However, if you're a fan of ejector airtime, I think the ejector hits towards the middle or front of the train the most. To be honest with you guys, my one ride in the back seat, I was actually a little disappointed because I was expecting it to launch me a ton, and it didn't. However, it is absolutely amazing in the middle of the front so personally i prefer the front half of the train anywhere in there is pretty good as far as like speed and intensity the entire train is absolutely insane that's no shot towards the back seat it's just my personal recommendation based on my six or seven rides i had the day i went that's pretty much all i've got for phantom's revenge it's nothing too insane as far as the layout goes. It's just a really awesome roller coaster with some really good ejector air, some good speed, some good intensity, and very, very good pacing. So what am I giving Phantom's Revenge as a final score? I'm giving it a whopping 100 out of 100. They knocked this out of the park converting this coaster. I don't know what it felt like before as I stated earlier in the video. But this ride currently as it stands is amazing. It does everything I love in a roller coaster and knocks it out of the park. It's got a pretty good duration and I absolutely love this roller coaster. As a standalone, I think it's fair that we just look at it for what it is and not compare it to other coasters. When you look at it this way, this ride is a gem. Have you rode Phantom's Revenge? Do you agree with me or disagree with me? Where do you rank Phantom's Revenge? Let me know down in the comments below, I'd love to talk about it. With that being said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this coaster review. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Be sure to keep God number one, and we'll see you guys next time, here at Christian Coasters, where we make epic coaster vlogs and videos. Peace!